Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica, and you have found the Two Sticks and String podcast. I am based in North Carolina. I'm an Army wife, and I am so happy that you're here today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending more of your time with me. I know you have a lot of options for podcasts, and if you have found something that resonates with me, I'm so glad that you have. And if not, that is perfectly okay, and I hope you have a great day. Um, this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet, cats, and traveling for the most part. Um, it has been a minute since I've recorded last, just because I've been traveling. You'll hear about it at the end. But <laughs> there's been a lot going on. I have some foes today. I have a knitting whip and a cross stitch whip to show you. I have some stash to show you, <laughs> and I have some future knitting to show you as well, um, just some basic life updates, and so let's get started. So first off, where to find me? You can find me on Instagram as Army Wife Knitting Life or Army Wife Knitting Life D Stash, but <clears throat> I'm going to be gone for a month starting tomorrow, so probably not the best time to say hey, I want to buy this yarn from you. But if you want to look at the pretties, then that's absolutely fine. And you can message me, of course, if you do find something you want. And I can have the picture pulled from the profile. And that way it'll be on hold for you until I come back home. Because when I'm across the country, I obviously can't just pick it up and grab it to ship it to you. Uh, you can also find me on Ravelry as Army Wife Knit Life. Or you can find our Ravelry group, which is a little dead right now, but that's okay. I hope that in the new year to have some fun, exciting things going, which will hopefully liven it back up a bit. But it is a two sticks and string Ravelry group. Just search for Patrol of the Owl, like you see at the beginning of every podcast of mine, and you'll know you are in the right spot. So, let's start with some foes. I know it's been a minute since I've recorded, so I've got a few foes to show you. <laughs> Uh, that's mostly just because by the time I get home from these trips that I've been taking, I'm dead on my feet for a little while. And then by the time I get back into a routine of knitting and finishing things, it's time for me to go again. So I've been home for a month at this point. I'm hoping to get this podcast out, edited and in the world before I leave tomorrow for a whole month. So let's start with our foes. First one I'm going to grab, it's right over here on my wall. Ignore the mess in here. Things are still a work in progress, as they always are. First foe are these awesome socks for Desert Vista Dye Works. This is her Glee colorway, and these are on my Milanedro sock blockers, as always. I'll put the shop name right down here because I actually have no idea how to pronounce it. That's just my best guess. <laughs> I love these soft blockers because she does offer free personalization on them and they also have the size of her blocker on there and they are absolutely stunning. Look at those. Beautiful. They are wood so they are very uh, light and airy but sturdy. I really appreciate that. Um, as always my socks are knit toe up. Uh, I have 27 stitches on each needle at the end. I use a fish lips kiss heel and it's on whatever needle size I have available, which ranges between a one and a one and a half. So <laughs> this is the Glee celebration, as I said, for the seventh annual Desert Vista Dye Works monthly sock club. So that's our first foe. Our second I have been on a stuffed animal kick. I've never made a stuffed animal knit in my life before. I have made one crochet one. Her name is Kendra the Kitty Cat. And we'll just say she's special. If you really want to find her, she's way down on my Instagram <laughs> profile from like 2015 or 16. She's in there. I promise you she's in there, but she is well buried. <laughs> but I had a much more successful time with knitting toys. Now, Jessica, why are you knitting toys, you might ask? Well, 
First off, I am not pregnant. I don't plan on being pregnant anytime in the near future. So no, I'm not knitting these for any children that we might be having. However, as I've said, I'm getting on a plane tomorrow and I'm going to be gone for a month. I am seeing my in-laws, my grandparents, my mother, my dad for like a day, if that. Um, but I'm going to California for my best friend Alex's wedding. I have the joy of being her matron of honor, but again, that is for the end of the episode. But on the way there, my mom and I are driving to California, much like we did last year. And so we are starting in Kansas, which is the state I've lived in the longest in my life. I don't call it my home state, but it's where I've lived the longest. And we're going there because A, we have a friend, we have lots of friends in the area. And we know people getting married this weekend. So we were invited to the wedding and my mother and I are going to go. While I'm there, however, I'm going to go see my in-laws. And my sister-in-law had a baby this time last year. So she's just turning one. I've never met her before because COVID. And we just haven't had the chance with my hubby's work schedule. So I'm going to be the first one to meet our new niece. And... I got super excited. It's her birthday coming up in like a week and a half. And so I needed to do the auntie things of buying her cute clothes and making her toys. So these first few projects are the result of that. This one is not for her though. This one is for a different friend of mine named Pat Pat. You guys have heard about Pat Pat before. So this is Wasabi the Whale by Susan Claudino. Uh, I used Karen one pound yarn in the colorway Deep Violet, and I just use Safety Eyes from Amazon. The felt is wool felt from one of the flock on Etsy, and I really like them. Susan Claudino is the pattern designer of this, as I said, and I did just stuff it with regular polyfill, and you can see that it's not perfect, but I like to think of it as that whales oftentimes have some scars from boating in the ocean and just fishing accidents and so they aren't perfect but they heal and they move on and they're stronger for it so my little wasabi whale is called whalian has a boating incident of his own and the whale is purple because <laughs> shocker guys it's a bts reference <laughs> i'm getting it in early this time uh, Whaley and 52 is one of the boys' songs, and it's about this whale that, uh, his, their, call, their calls, their sounds that they make, whales typically communicate with each other on a certain frequency sound wave. And Whaleyan is the only whale in the world that does not communicate on that sound wave. He is at 52 gigahertz instead of 50. And so as a consequence... The rest of the whales don't understand him and can't hear him, and he is said to be the loneliest whale in existence. It is a very sad story. It is true. It is a true story, not just it is... You understand what I'm getting at. Um, the boys wrote this song about how they oftentimes feel lonely, even though they're surrounded by other people, just like Whalian is surrounded by other whales in the pod. And um, because they're celebrities, they can't always know whose intentions are true and they can be surrounded by people and still feel lonely because there's no one else to understand what they're going through besides the seven of them. So it just, it's, it's a very sad thought, but it's a very valid thought at the same time. Also, I'm just going to throw this in here because I am immensely proud of the boys. Yesterday, they spoke at the UN General Assembly about, um, the lost generation from COVID. So people in their late teens and twenties and how they are now known as the lost generation because COVID kind of put things on pause for a lot of them. And I don't consider myself a part of the lost generation, even though I am in my twenties, I'm at the other end. And so my life wasn't really put on hold or affected in a, in an ad, 
as badly as it was when you're graduating college or it's your senior year of high school. Those are big changes and a lot of things happening in the pandemic, whereas I just moved. That's all I had to deal with when in the middle of this pandemic is international move. Not a big deal in comparison. But so um, they got to speak at the UN yesterday and to think that they used to be these guys that people said would not be successful and were going to amount to nothing because they're from an itty bitty company in Korea. No one's ever going to hear their music. And now seven, seven of them are speaking at United Nations and they are now diplomatic envoys for the country of South Korea. That's pretty amazing in my book. Anyways, so that is my BTS rant for the episode. You know, I always get them in somehow. <laughs> but so this is Waylian. Uh, he is going to my friend Pat Pat in a care package I have for her that includes her two other sweaters that I knit for her last year, the hat that I knit for her, and a few other fun goodies. So just in case she has not, in case she's watching this before her box arrives to her, sometimes she watches, sometimes she doesn't. I just, I just ruined the surprise, but know that there are other fun things in there for you, Pat Pat. I purple you. Let me put this in your box. Okay. I'll pack it in there pretty later. <laughs> okay. The next one, also kind of made for BTS, but also just for my niece. This is Bon Bon the Bunny, also from the Susan Claudino pattern. Uh, this is another Karen One Pound jumbo, and it's called, oops, Rose. I'm going to pull it up really quickly. And I'll let you know. Just got to pull it up on my Ravelry on my phone. <laughs> I'm a bad podcaster. I should know this. But I don't know it off the top of my head. I know a bunch of other ones that are on there. But not this. Bon Bon the Bun Bun is made in Rosewood. That is what it's called. Rosewood yarn. And again, safety eyes are just from Amazon. Because she is a year. She's not a year old yet. So, Bon Bon. My favorite little part is her little tail. What I love about Suits and Claudino's patterns is that everything is knit in the round and it is seamless. So, you make all of your little parts first. Like your paws and your ears and your feet. And you just put them on, live, on waist yarn. Then you can attach them as you go. Uh, I say that it's in part related to BTS because... When I was knitting Bon Bon here, uh, it was on Jungkook's birthday, and he's known as the bunny of BTS. So, double hit there. <laughs> but she is so cute, and I absolutely adore her. When she sits like this, her feet are perfect. And just, I think she's precious. I'm probably going to make a few more of her. She's very shy. Put her there. Then the next thing that I made has a counterpart to it. This is Bugle the Baby Elephant, also a Susan Claudino pattern, also with Amazon safety eyes. <laughs> Look at the little tail. Her tails are cute, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> but they're just precious. And I just I love them so much. I thought that there would be like a pipe cleaner or something in this tail. There's not. It's just in the pattern so that it's stiff. It's absolutely brilliant. If you have not tried any of Susan Claudino's patterns, go check them out if you like stuffed toys or um, a groomy, because these were such a joy to knit. I want to make so many more of them. <laughs> I have purchased an entire five pound box of stuffing on top of another four pound bag that I have. And I still have a little bit left from this bag. That's how often I plan on making stuffed toys now because I'm addicted. Anyways, this is also knit in Karen one pound yard in the garden gross grows colorway. And I think it's just perfect. However, I felt like when I made Bon Bon, I wanted to have an, a fun accessory to go with Bon Bon, but I didn't have enough yarn left over to make one because 
that yarn itself was already leftover scrap yarn. And I didn't really want to make her a hat out of it. I, I just was not feeling the baby hat thing. I wanted to make a sweater, so that meant I had to buy yarn. Darn. So I bought this at my local My Michaels. Not Michaels, Joann's. I bought it at Joann's. I've also been to Michaels since, but I bought this at Joann's. So her accessory is this cute little sweater. This is the flax sweater in the one to two year size from Tin Can Knits. I omitted the garter stitch on the sleeves. I just have never really been a fan of it. It's not my thing really, and that's perfectly okay. If it is, that's fine for you. I just, I think it's so cute as is. And with the yarn being so busy, I thought it would be a wasted work for me just because it's not, it, the yarn is too busy to allow that. It would just get lost. So one to two year size, as I said, took me about a day and a half to knit this and it just, it's so cute. I love to knit little baby things. They're fast, they're satisfying. And I also am a big advocate when you're learning a new technique, like you're thinking of knitting a sweater, knit a baby one first, because it'll teach you all of the techni techniques you need to know in a faster time frame. And if you practice them before doing it on your own adult size sweater, if something goes wrong, you're not losing days upon days of work. You're losing a little bit of time and that's it. So the payoff is worth it, in my opinion. Even if it means you have a baby sweater sitting around, that's fine. Um, I personally have found a shelter in the area that accepts knitted items for women and children. And... It's not just hats and scarves I need. They will also accept sweaters and clothes. So if I need to knit a baby sweater to learn something, it can have use afterwards. But also, if you don't want to donate it, that's totally fine. If you want to keep it, keep one around. Learn how to duplicate stitch on it or do sticking on it or something. It can have use beyond just the technique. And it's not just going to sit there gathering dust if you're like me and don't have a child so but this one is going to my niece and they're going to match so she can match a little baby elephant it's so sweet <laughs> okay I only have three more finished objects I know only three crazy right I've already done one two three four five projects but it's been a minute since I've been with y'all, so that's why. So this next one, as always, signature Jesse move. Still needs an end woven in. However, this is the Boom Shawl. I will put who it's by in the notes because I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But um, it's a free pattern. I used a Karen Cake in the Mixed Berry colorway. I think I used a size eight needle on it. I used whatever the pattern called for. So I really like this colorway though. I think it's so pretty. And it's just, it's the perfect little wrap around size. So it'll be perfect. And I just need to tuck in that end. Things will be great. Perfect for the winter here. Because let's be honest, it's North Carolina. It doesn't get that cold but I think it's a fun color and I, it's a great use of a Karen cake which I sometimes struggle with using just because I typically like smaller stripes with repeating colors not these huge fat strips of color <laughs> or I want something variegated so sometimes I struggle to find a use for those cake yarns and that is a simple way to do it if you have a suggestion for a great pattern for cake type yarns please let me know I'd love to take a look and find it out because I have those I also have some in fingering weight and I could use something for them because otherwise they're just sitting there on my shelf gathering dust and they're too beautiful for me to want to de-stash but I don't know what to use them for so please give me your suggestions 
Uh, this shawl and the one I'm about to show you are for the Across the Pond cowl, which is held by Ruth Loves to Knit and Fernanda from Little Monkeys and Me. And they are both friends of mine. I consider myself lucky to be able to call them that. And their cowl ends at the end of this month. So if you have any shawl that you're working, it's on Ravelry and Instagram. So if for any reason you can't use Ravelry, you do have another option. Uh, just make sure to get your your projects in and make your knitting count for something. There are some amazing prizes out there. So I believe off the top of my head, one of them is a Ho Hilo Catelli bag. So that's what I would love to get that prize. However, I honestly don't need another project bag. So it's okay if it doesn't go to me. I don't need yarn. I don't need project bags. I don't even need patterns, but it's always nice to try and add something new to add new ideas and new colors. So without further ado, my other shawl. This is something I was barely started on when y'all saw it last. This is the Changing Staircases shawl from Tristan of Dragon Horde Designs. This is the Golden Pearls color, co Golden Pearls yarn in the Love Potion colorway. And it just worked up beautifully. This shawl has been blocked. It just doesn't have ends woven in yet because of course it's traditional Jesse fashion. I hate ends, but I think it just, it came out so beautiful and light and airy and the colors are just stunning. All right, one last project and then we'll get on to whips. This I finished last night. Most of these you've never seen before. The only one in that entire pile that I've shown you guys before is my changing staircase <laughs> Everything else is new. This was cast on two days ago and was finished last night. This is the Oats Cowl, Cowl from Tin Can Knits in their free collection. And it's just a regular stockinette cowl with a third of it being this garter stitch panel. And while I didn't like it for the sweater, this was a yarn that was plain enough that I thought the garter stitch would make an impact. So, it is done. And you'll notice most of the projects that I've done in this past month have been commercial yarn. Because I am a person, I'm not a yarn snob. I like to use what works great for a project. I'm not going to use indie dyed yarn on a baby, on a baby knit. Because... If it's not super wash, I don't want to make more work for the parents and I don't want them to have to worry about hand washing something or having the dye bleed. So it's just easier to use acrylic because it can go in the washer and dryer and not shrink or anything. So I like to use commercial yarn for gifts because then I don't have to give them any special care instructions because sometimes, let's be honest, it's a pain to have to hand wash things. And I don't want to make it a chore to have to take care of something that I've created for you. So I like to use commercial yarn for myself and for others, and I don't mind. I go for what's best for the purpose of the project. I have a lot of beautiful sweaters that I have knit. A lot of them are in commercial yarn. I do have the occasional indie dyed, and I'm fine with that. But I don't always feel the need to use any dyed yarn for big projects like that, especially because at my size, it can be expensive. So I do treasure my indie dyed sweater quantities, but it's not the norm for me, and I don't think it will ever be the norm for me. But so with that rant over, this is also in commercial yarn, long since discontinued. I'm sorry, guys. This has been in my stash for at least five years. This is Isaac Mizrahi craft yarn in the Broadway line in the Imperial colorway. So it has sparkles in it. And it's not, I'm trying to, there we go. 
it was a good spot. It's not like Stellina. It's just like actual, an actual ply of metallic thread. And it's not necessarily the softest to feel. However, it is easy enough. It's not everywhere. So it's, it's going to be still be soft and comfy to wear. It just gives it a little extra zhuzh. This is also being a gift for a friend of mine. So, and it has, we'll just move right into whips, a companion hat. This is the barley hat, also by Tin Can. It's also a free pattern, just like the flaxes, because they're all from the same collection. This is the barley hat. As I said, I am knitting the adult size small for both of these. And I'm currently knitting this on Chowgu size 8, 16 inch circulars. I am at the crown decreases on it, so hopefully it will be done tomorrow before I leave because <laughs> my friend is picking me up at noon for our for her to take me to the airport here in town. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I also have this one finished object. It still needs a stock, but I test knit a lumpy pumpkin pattern for my friend Corinne of Hori Bazaar Yarn Co. And it's a cute lumpy pumpkin. I use Jane C. Brett Marble Chunky and pattern is written wonderfully. And what I love about it is that pumpkins are not always perfectly symmetrical. They're a thing in nature. So sometimes you get big lumps like this or smaller lumps like this one. That's what I love about the pattern is that she tells you stuff it as you would like. You can make them perfectly symmetrical, but you don't have to. So I went for the non-symmetrical version. Very easy to follow pattern. Took me two hours one night in bulky weight yarn. All right, and this is also what I have left because I started with a, whole, a full ball. I used maybe 25 grams of bulky weight yarn. So very quick, very simple, great stash buster if you have some scraps lying around. Just a thought. Okay, that is it for knitting whips and finished objects. I do have one cross stitch whip. It's been a minute since you guys have seen this, but it's made so much progress. Jen, if you are watching, Look away. This is your Christmas present. I don't want you to see it yet. When there are nine. This is a Ruth Bader Ginsburg quote. And it will have her collar on both sides and then columns from the Supreme Court here. It also has a nice little RBG descent. There we go. Needleminder. This quote is so important to me and to my sister because it's all about empowering women. When, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg was asked how many women will be enough women on the Supreme Court, uh, she said, when there are nine. And the interviewer then responded, well, don't you think that's, that's a little much? And she said, no one batted an eye when there were nine men and just left it at that. And both my sister and I are, we very much align with that quote because why should there be able to be nine men without a, without anyone blinking? Why can't there be nine women on the Supreme Court? We are getting better, but uh, we will leave the politics out. That's a quote that my sister and I align ourselves with. And we always like to say, uh, empowered women empower women. Just like Ruth Bader Ginsburg does. We proudly dissent in our house and we don't mind. <laughs> All right, let's get on to future knitting. There has been a little bit of chat around Ravelry and Instagram, but there's a new West Knits Mystery Knit Along coming up. It starts in about a week and a half. I'm going to do it. <laughs> 
I can show you two of the colors now. The other two will be, well, the other three are in stash. So first off though, main future knitting. This is my knitting for Desert Fisted Eye Works next, next month. It is the Swans That Swim In colorway. I have knit socks out of this for me before. These are going to be for my aunt. So I'm going to use my, there's about 50 grams left in here, and she's going to get a nice pair of shorty socks out of this. So I've been trying to be more conscious of my yarn consumption and making sure I'm not just throwing away half of a skein of sock yarn because I've already knit a pair of socks for me out of it. So I'm going to use this and it'll also make the yarn that I have from Desert Vista Dye Works last longer. So I can participate a few more years since I have started to stop buying so much sock yarn. <laughs> for socks because I have over 200 pairs of socks in my drawers right now. I take up two drawers in my dresser because I have so many socks I've knit. So I try to use them to gift them to other people now <laughs> is the, uh, what I've learned from that. So I guess what I will do is I will show you the two colors for the Stephen West Knits Along, West Knit Mystery Knit Along that I owned already now and then I will pull out in the stash in a few seconds everything together. This also if you follow me on Instagram you've already seen my color selection. This is three Irish girls adorn Lux and it is in the driftwood colorway. This is from Colorful Creativity. Uh, she has a podcast, Caroline, and this is the Abri Kotzenfly colorway. It's probably really, really bad Dutch. And Entschuldigung, I know it's German, but I'm so sorry, Caroline, if I mispronounced that, because I probably did. I'm so sorry. All right, I do have three books in stash. I'm just going to show you really quickly and then we'll get to the yarn and all the other goodies. First off is a cross stitch one. Also my cross stitch is just 14 count Ada. I bought it on, I bought it in Joann's and it's all the called for colors in DMC. The needle minder I will put in my description show notes, the shop that I got it from. It's also where I got my adorable Mong who is right here. More BTS. Woohoo! Alright, so I have a Christmas quickie cross stitch pattern book that I found in Hobby Lobby when I went with my friend because she needed fabric. Anyways, at Joann's I found this awesome Pokemon crochet book. I'm going to try my hand at Amigurumi again now that I'm a little more comfortable with crocheting again. And my plan, let me just find this really quickly. I want to knit the Snorlax in here because, here we go. Because one of my nicknames for my hubby is Snorlax. And um, because he likes to sleep a lot and snack. And he and he'll always put his hands on his belly like Snorlax does when he's sleeping. So that's why I call him Snorlax. So he needs to have a Snorlax of his own. His birthday's in November. Probably not going to have it done in time since we're going to be gone most of October. But I can try. If not, there's always winter stuff and Christmas and Yule and Valentine's Day and birthdays and anniversaries. So there's always an, an occasion that I can knit it for him. We'll crochet it. The other thing that I've purchased is Robin Octopus and Friends. This is by Claire Gelder. Also, this book is by Sabrina Summers. My apologies. This is mostly bulky weight yarn and Aran weight but it is so cute and I fell in love with this sweet 
unicorn and the fact that they are knit makes me so happy. Here's another picture of the unicorn and the seahorse. I love them so much. They're adorable. And as I said, I have a thing now for making stuffed animals. It's stash time. As if this hasn't all been stash. However, now I can show you my colors for the West Knits along. I have this one, this one, and this one. These are all from La Vienna May. I bought them at Charlotte Yarn in Charlotte, obviously. We're trying to configure this. This is a really like deep royal purple, not brown. <laughs> So let's try it. There we go. There are our colors for the West Knits. Okay. So this is, these are all Merino Super Socks. This is the color Madeline. This is the color parchment. And this is damask. It's kind of a dusty pink. It looks a little beige, I know. It's got pink tones to it, I promise. As I said, those three are from Charlotte Yarn, as is this one, which is from a local dyer to the area. This is Native Fibers. And it is in the color Masquerade. It's got some oranges, some purples, some cream, dusty pink. I almost put this in the Westness along, but he said that you wanted more solids and light speckles, and this is more of a busy variegated. Also, I put this color in here in my West Knits because my friend Ruth, my purple you Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit, loves yellow. And she always does the West Knits long. She has a lot of West Knit shawls in general. She said she was going to sit this one out. The jury's out on that if she actually does and if she does power to her because, whew, that takes some restraint. But yellow makes her happy and I wanted to think of my friend Ruth while I knit something that she tends to knit. Okay, the next two are the same. This is from my local yarn store, Bella Filotti in Southern Pines in the Araucania yarn line in the Huasco sock. And I'm trying to think of, let's see, Araucania in the colorway, if it says, the color is 1024 Vinicunca. I don't know what that means off the top of my head, but I saw this color and fell in love. I wanted a whole sweater quantity in it, but I restrained myself. I just got two and figured it'll be a great contrasting color for when I eventually knit my Gaudi sweater from Julie Knits in Paris because the top of this colorwork yoke sweater is supposed to look like stained glass from La Sagrada Familia, which if you've been watching my podcast for any length of time, when I still lived in Germany, we went to La Sagrada Familia. It's been on my bucket list for years, ever since I was in high school, and I took my first Spanish class. I finally went. It was beautiful. It was amazing, life-changing. And now I want a sweater to commemorate my going there. And I want to go there when they actually finish building the church. <laughs> Two more yarn purchases and then there is stitch markers. Is it really a podcast for me with stash if I don't have yarn from Corinne of Hilary Bazaar Yarn Co.? The answer is no. No, it's not. <laughs> this is the July 
Sorry, that's a business card from Charlotte Aaron. This is the July BTS Club colorway. This is Permission to Dance on her Nova Sock Face, which is a 7525 Super Wash, wash Merino yarn. And it comes with a little mini. Because we don't need permission to dance. Da -da 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 -da. Sorry, we're not going to do more. And sorry for the crinkling. And then August's colorway is Butterfly. Also with the mini. Um, I did not purchase the September colorway. It is based off of their variety show run and it just I'm having so much yarn come in and I spent a lot of money this month on yarn because I went to so many yarn shops and I actually did buy a kit for the West Knits Mystery Knit Along and so I had to give something somewhere and I chose to not get the BTS run because the colors weren't really speaking to me. It was just my decision. And I was supposed to be stashing down, you guys. I do have stats on that for you, by the way. Also, um, I, as I said, I have stitch markers. And is it really a stitch marker from me if it's not from Simply Serving? Also, no. So <laughs> we have this cute little black cat with a little pumpkin. We have... Moon Cat. It's Artemis from Sailor Moon, y'all. But, of course, copyright means you can't really say it. It's Moon Cat. And then this cute little candy corn star. And I understand candy corn tastes like candle wax and crayons. I don't eat them, other than I do like the ones that have the chocolate base. But uh, the star was cute, so I had to get it. I had to. All right, that is it for stash. We are now at the life part. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, there is no more yarn discussion or cross-stitch discussion. So if you don't want to stick around, that's totally fine. I do not blame you at all. I'm trying to put away my stash that I need to pack for tomorrow. Oh, goodness. It's going to be a long day. I apologize. Let me put my stash away. Okay. Life. I spent last month, I was gone for 10 days in San Diego with my grandparents, my babcha, my javik, and had a blast. I went to a bridal shower for my bestie, Alex. So, um, ahem, <clears throat> moo Alex. Because I know you watch. And I love you. And I'll see you soon. Um, we went to the bridal shower. And I was there for my babcha as she started to do some medical testing and appointments. And all I'm going to say about it on here is that she, is med she has some medical problems going on. And so we are now taking every chance that we can to spend with her. And it it's not like a dire we need to be there tomorrow kind of thing but it's just she's sick and we need to be cautious and just be careful so that's part of the reason why my mother and I are driving to San Diego instead of flying directly to her because less germs that way because we'll be in our own car and we're only going to our sterilized hotel rooms and that's kind of it. We are taking enough time after the wedding this weekend to make sure that we don't get sick or and we aren't bringing any germs to her. So that's how, how slow of a road trip we are making this to be. Um, I'm really grateful that I get to spend time with my Babcha and I am close with her. I know a lot of people don't have that opportunity or they aren't close with their family or their family is gone and so know that I am so sad and I'm sorry that you don't have that and may you be comforted in knowing that they're always in our heart and hug your family close if you do still have them. We'll leave it there because I'm not going to cry on my podcast. <laughs> okay. I'm also going to be in San Diego for my best friend Alex's wedding. I'm really excited. I have my dress 
in my suitcase already. I do still need to find shoes because, gosh, Alex, why do you have to be so tall? <laughs> and I am short. <laughs> so uh, my dress is a little long. I do need to get some shoes that will help lift me up a little bit. <laughs> Uh, the, the dress is beautiful. I got to pick it as long as I followed her colors and it stayed church appropriate and it does and she loves it last I checked and I'm just so excited to see her finally marry her, her groom and he's so nice and he's so good to her and you can see how happy he makes her and that is all that matters to me because she's my bestie and she has been one of my besties since the first day I met her in our very first summer together <laughs> when we were 10 and it was my first summer spent with my grandparents. I lived in Kansas and we did a road trip from Kansas to California. We are a road tripping family. We also fly, but the fun of road tripping is that you get to see things along the way. <laughs> and when you have the time, it's awesome to be able to do it. And it was my first time ever leaving my parents for any length of time. And I was nervous because I never left them. And now I'm going to be in a completely different state from them. And I didn't know anyone my age in the area. And my Bob just like, my neighbor, she's your age. You're, you're going to be great. And every summer since... We had a great time until we both graduated high school and here we are we're almost 30 <laughs> and we're still besties and I treasure her so much I'm so happy to see her so happy okay with that I'm going to be gone for a month and I will not be returning until after the wedding is over for sure and then right when I get home from the wedding, I am having some minor surgery. I have some cysts that need to be removed and they are not cancerous, but they do need to be taken care of. So one is on my arm and I don't know when I will be knitting next. So the best time, way to get a hold of me and to check out my knitting is probably going to be Instagram until I am back up and running. So it'll probably be early November, mid-November before my next real podcast. I just want you guys to know that so that you're not worrying or um, questioning where I'm at because I know a lot of people do worry when you don't hear from me for a while and I love and appreciate every single message you guys send to me. So until then, do what makes your heart sing for me. It's two sticks and a string. See ya. Well, I am back. I have a small little edit to add that I realized as I was editing. I forgot to mention this. I said that I was going to give you an update on my stash down tiaras and so far I'm doing well. I have not purchased any fiber. I have lost the theoretical hypothetical tiaras that I've earned because of the yarn that I've had come into the house already but I'm still super close to making it back because I've done that well. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. I've just, I've worked really hard on my knitting projects and getting them done and moving the yarn as I get it. So for yardage, you're required to have 13,000 yards out of stash after you've accounted for taking everything in. So I am at 12,582.8 yards gone permanently out of my stash and so I have a little bit over 400 yards to go and I will be back to having that tiara. Although I do have those five skeins of West Knits coming in because I ordered it before remi remembering that I'm not going to be here when they arrive. <laughs> so I have those coming in, but hopefully since I will be doing the West Knits along, I'll take it back out with the yarn in my stash that I've shown you already. And for grams, I am supposed to take out 6,000. I'm at 5,228, so a little less than 800 grams, and I will be good to go. And thankfully, I have things like my hat almost done, and I'll have the 500 grams from the West Knits along 
and I have a few other projects that I'll be doing so hopefully that should cover me I am pretty much done purchasing yarn for the year other than my BTS monthly club and I have an advent I have a, a labyrinth calendar coming in from knitting Mikabi that will last the entire month of December not just advent and I think those are really the only things that I plan on having come in for yarn unless there's something that I find out I need for a project so I'm mostly good on my goals I think I'll make it um, just also as an update for my Ravelry project challenge I wanted to get 50 projects done for the year and let's see where I am at right now I am currently at 38 projects done so that means that I am 76% of the way done to my goal hooray so I guess I will see y'all later and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day see ya